first off, how's it going? And has this been the longest layoff or break that you've taken in a long time? And what have you been doing since the lockdown happened? You know what? This is the longest time I've had no basketball in my life. I'm sure a lot of players, even in the the younger guys, you know, have played basketball since they were kids. So this is the longest time. It's, it's really been hard. Mentally, it's hard because if you do something for so long and then it's taken away from you, you feel like you're kind of stagnant and you're kind of useless. I feel useless a lot. But yeah, I'm just happy that uh, I have an avenue to speak out on things sometimes if I want to. I have a good a good house, a good home where I can work out. Um, I've been doing a lot of doing a lot of yoga with my fiance, um, doing a lot of home workouts. <laughs> um, recently, they opened up the court where I stay, so uh, I'm able to shoot. But um, of course, it's still still different because there's no no one, no teammates, no coaches. It's yeah. kind of you know, yeah. So how is it with the uncertainty? Like, how do you find that motivation to wake up and say like, oh, today I'm still gonna try to get better even though for some time, baka wala pang, you know? Yeah, I mean, basketball has given me so much in my life, man. Like, everything I have in my life is off the game of basketball. Uh, even my fiance, I met her in the court. You know, everything I have, I'm taken care of financially by my profession. Like, it drives me to be better, not only because it's my job to play basketball, which is the obvious part, but kind of owe it to this game. And I don't want to do anything different from how I was before. I just want to continue to get better every day and see if I can improve on something. And right now, during the lockdown, I was really trying to um, focus on some rehab work, some things that you know were tight, muscles that are tight, and trying to get stronger, do a lot of things that I don't, I don't normally do during the season. So it's, it's, it's been good, man. Yeah, let's talk about where you started in basketball your whole life. You said for you, you started in the grade school playing basketball. Yeah, yeah. Um, started playing basketball, uh, varsity basketball when I was grade four. And my first league was the SVP. I was uh, 10 years old or 11 years old, I think, when I started. Um, I was not recruited to play basketball. Uh, my family was, were, they're actually all doctors. <laughs> I'm the only one who's not a doctor. <laughs> But my dad taught me everything I, I know um, from basketball. She and she, you know, we, he, made, he kind of spiked my interest. He would bring me to play basketball with him when I was, when he was with, his, with his friends. And I learned through watching and playing. And eventually, you know, I just, I just really liked it. I watch, I watch, I'd watch UAP, I'd watch NBA, I'd watch PBA. I, did, I played basketball all the time. So I just kind of grew an interest to it. So it was, it was fun, man. Like, I was growing up... Uh, being that kind of kid who didn't really have anything going basketball-wise, but really wanted to. So who's the Blue Eagle that you looked up to? Or someone that you wanted to copy in your Nathanae? Uh, personally, I, I really like Larry Fonacher. I like Wesley Gonzalez. Uh, those, those, even Mike Cortez. Even, even oh, yes. he was in La Salle. But in, on, you know, and he, was, he actually became my teammate um, my rookie year TV. But uh, I think we'll see Larry, um, Chikuya Larry, he's won so much individual acc- accolades in his, la- in his life and he's all about the team. And to Wesley also, the way, like his moves, Wesley Gonzalez. Is, I grew up kind of watching those two wings and uh, just kind of wanted to be somewhat kind of, kind of in their mold. Can you talk about the competition you've had since grade school? How did you find your way around the team and what position you wanted to play? Like, how did you figure things out ba- for basketball? Well, you know, I don't know if you know this. Maybe you can ask your brother. Or your, uh, when I growing up, I I wasn't had today, how I play today is not the way I used to play. You know, today I I spot up, I shoot a lot of threes. Back then, you know, I was a guard. I was just a big guard, man. I used my height and my size and kind of a little bit of skill for me to be kind of angat sa competition, parang you know, in that in that sense. And uh, it's crazy because as I grew. As I climbed up, you know, I was in grade school, I was a big guard, so it was easy for me to do everything. And in high school, I, I grew, and I was still able to do the same things I was able to do. But in college, uh, of course, I'm a skinny, skinny 18-year-old kid coming out of high school. Well, I have a chance if I want to be a slasher, I want to be a defender against 22-year-old, 23-year-old. So I had to revamp my game. And I think looking back, I, I just tried to fit whatever the team, no matter what, like I tried to Try to, try to find a role in my team, whatever it takes to, to be part of like the, the main rotation. I remember watching you in high school. You actually used to guard like the best player, usually on the 
opposing team. So what was the experience like? And I remember, parang Kevin Ferrer said pa na he doesn't like playing against you specifically. <laughs> you know, at that time, you know, I just wanted to make winning, winning plays every game. And I wanted to win all the time. That's really like, that's one thing that my dad always taught me is it doesn't matter, you know, what you do as long as you win the game. And I noticed when I watch basketball, I notice a lot of players doing a lot of the dirty work and they don't get the credit. But if you really know basketball and you really watch it, you will know that they're a big part of success. And that's what I tried to do throughout my whole career. To ask your question in, in high school, um, you know, Coach Jamaik, legendary Ateneo coach. I was his favorite uh, player to get mad at. You can ask him. Because he would always be on me for whatever reason. And it really motivated me to be a good defender. And he really pushed me and kind of like, he gave me a innate responsibility to guard the best player. Like, it's not even a question. I should, be able, I should do it no matter what. So whether it was a guard or... Maybe not the center, but maybe a guard to a four-man. I had the responsibility to guard him, so I learned a lot. It was fun. It was fun. Looking back, it was really fun. So what can you tell the younger kids? Na, now everyone just wants to score and all. Right? Yeah. That's their way of fitting in. What can you tell them like, how to adjust to the coaches and how to really make a difference, not just by scoring? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you said that because I'm sure you would know. People that we know that have a really keen eye in basketball will will always notice everything that happens on the court, you know, but the younger kids, you know, they look at, they go to YouTube and they, they see highlights, right? they see highlights of highlights yeah. on Instagram and they, they see, oh, this guy went crazy, you know, he's doing all this. But most of the time, that's one in what, 200 play, uh, people who are going to make a highlight reel or going to score 30 points, right? It's, most of the time, people are going to notice those players, but that's not always the case. You can't always be the best player. Um, that's what I learned also. Like, I was never the best player, never a no superstar, never a guy who people came to see and watch, you know. But I think I understood the importance of doing the little things, intangibles. What you just mentioned, like, people just want to see, you know, scoring and threes and all that. But sometimes it's not just that. Teams and coaches and other players will will see your value if even if you don't end up in the highlight reel or you end up in the in the headline. So to the young kids, man, just work hard and play the right way and then the game will treat you the right way. As you grow older, the competition gets tougher and the coaches even tougher pa on the yeah. on the team. So who's the players na, that took you under his wing and gave you the most advice that you learned from? Um, you know, that's a great question, man. In high school it was hard for me to name it's hard for me to name a player because we're all so young. And it was really Coach Jamaica who pushed us, you know, and yeah. even further than that, it's just my dad who pushed me in my own younger years. But in college, I, I think the ones who really helped me are Baco in Austria, Tanino Gonzaga, Kirk Long, the wing guys, you know, wings, because, siempre, I'm a wing, I was a wing, and they gave me a lot of advice, and I was, again, I was a, I was a skinny 18-year-old kid coming out of high school. I had no shot if I wanted to play right away, I would have a hard time, I was very raw. These guys helped me a lot, man, they gave me so much advice, and your work ethic, I think, talaga. In, especially with Tibaco and then Tonino. Grab your work ethic, nila. Like, they would come in early and stay late. And I would question, like, why are they doing this? But I, I saw it, eh, day in and day out. So eventually, napunta rin sa akin, you know, napunta rin na. Eventually, I was the, the older guy who would come in early and stay late. So, you know, it's a cycle. And I'm sure now, the Blue Eagles now, for sure, lahat sila, they're all gonna, gonna do that. Because it's a culture, the band, they all try to stay yeah. extra work and all that stuff, yeah. The culture that you're speaking of, Ateneo now is a winning culture. In 2010, you won your high school championship. Yeah. So 2011, that was the four-peat. You were in the middle of the, you know. So how were you able yeah. to like still try to handle the expectations of everyone, but still push yourself completely, trying to adjust yeah. Naren? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I see what you're getting there. It's, I think it was extremely difficult for me personally to adjust. Because, again, I was so raw, man. Like, people think I can, I was, uh, this is how I played before. I, I just developed my, my shooting through college and through the pros. It's, I was so raw. I couldn't really dribble. I couldn't really shoot. I could, I could finish and, and, and do all that stuff, but I couldn't really do things at a certain level. It was so hard for me because coming off high school, we were 
highly touted. Uh, I was with Kiefer Ravenna and Paolo Romero, di ba? And then we had a good run that year. I think we didn't, lose, we, didn't, we didn't lose a game, I think. And we won the championship. So coming out of high school, I had some steam coming in. But through college, it's a different animal, man. Like Everyone's good. Every, everybody's stronger. There were imports at the time already. So I could have just, you know, go in the lane and go and do all this. <laughs> Do all these layups and all these things that I used to do. So yeah, I had to develop again, you know, just day in and day out, working and out and develop some skills. So my hair, my hair, for me adjustment. Especially some other guys like Siki for like he seamlessly just fit in at college from the from day one. Cause his game was molded not, you know, he was big and strong, and he was crafty and he was so polished already to be in the in, in to play college. And but for me, I was so raw. So raw, man. So uh, it, was, it was a process, but it was fun. Yeah, can you talk about you know, that relationship with Kiefer? You know? I'm sure when you talk about that high school team, it's always you and Kiefer. Like, what are the, some of the things that you were able to learn from each other? And then maybe the partnership through the years. You know? How was practice like? Did you ever, were you always on the same team or were you always guarding each other? What is that? The, competition um, you know um we were born the same year so and he he moved to ateneo from la salle grade five or six i'm not sure so basically we were in every league that had uh and and for those who don't know leagues in when you're grade school high school are based on the year um so if you're uh born a certain year you're basically in that age group and we were on the same age group and so we would play all the time and i think Familiarity lang kasi obviously he would play l- longer minutes and then I would play minutes too. So parang nagka, nagka ano, uh, good chemistry kami kasi we play often. We played with each other in the youth team and we played with each other in the high school team and all these other leagues I forgot about. So yeah, it was, it was fun, man. I think his basketball IQ is, is, is exceptional. That's what his main thing is. And you know, just to add the fact that he comes from an athletic family is that is a PBA player, really great PBA player, who's the coach of Pogantex now. He's the most, he's a volleyball player, right? So, jeans, right? It's, it's, you know, uh, I just tried to support. I was never, like, like a superstar anyway. And I just tried to support his needs. Like, things na hindi nagagawa sa court, I would just fill, it, fill in, you know. And eventually, you know, we're lucky, we're lucky enough to, we had, we had great teammates too, um, and a good coaching staff. We were lucky enough to win some, some championships in our time. Let's talk about the art of shooting. I feel like for the amount of threes taken in today's basketball, no one really gives credit to the pure shooters. Everyone shoots threes, but not everyone is a shooter. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's actually, just, it was uh, Kuya Larry who told me this, but shooting is, being a shooter is a blessing and a curse. Because blessing because everybody wants to, to be a shooter and a curse because it's hard to be a shooter. <laughs> It's hard, man. But I myself, I don't even consider myself to be a pure shooter, and to be honest with you, because I think pure shooters are like born with it. I, there, I have, I know people who are just born shooters. Like from the very day that they were born, they get shoot the basketball. I was not that way. I just developed in my my shot. And what one thing I can kind of give advice, if you know, focus on quality and not quantity. Try to focus on your each shot should be the same. You should focus on trying to make every shot and not just keep jacking up shots. Those are so simple but very vital. Start off by start close, master close range, and master free throws first before you shoot threes. Because if you can't shoot free throws, you won't be able to make a three. People just go straight to the three-point line. I see kids all do it all the time. It's, it's, it's not really frustrating. But the part part of me, I'm sure you would you would agree. Like part of me is like saying, no man, you gotta master, master <laughs> yeah, get closer first. first. <laughs> exactly right. So that's what uh, my dad would always tell me. He would always make me shoot from my lap, so from from near, go farther and farther and farther, and then free throws. Free throws are so important to, to shooting threes. It's I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but if you can master your free throw, you can easily transition to three-point shots because you know, that's your base. Eh? Like, if all else fails, you know that you can make free throws. Then you know that there's a way for you to make the three. Yeah. And that's something that I always try to keep in the back of my mind is the fundamentals. Stick to the fundamentals, guys, the kids, especially kids out there. Don't <laughs> shoot threes right away. Your career is not always going to be 
like so easy, right? Not all this good stuff. So I just have to ask the Mac Bella moment. <laughs> what was oh, going man. through your mind and how were you able to deal with it after? Oh man, did you have to, bro? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Okay. That's probably the worst basketball moment I've ever experienced. Because not only was it my final year in at for Ateneo, that's my final game for Ateneo. We had a chance to win and I know we could have won. <laughs> I know we could have won. Like and it's crazy how it comes down to one shot, but that FU team was stacked. Yeah. That FU team was good. They had they had I think four or five or six maybe PBA players now. So that team was so good and we were number four and they were number one or something like that. We were the underdog but I knew for a fact that we could have won um, but man give credit to that team because they they were so hard to defend and they with, when they started playing Bello at the four and then they had uh, Mike Salomia and Pogoy uh, or Pogoy and Jose uh, uh, at the five man that was so so tough to guard and each possession, I remember. I remember talking to Kiefer, and um, I think it was Matt who was playing crunch time, or yeah, it was Kiefer, me, Kiefer, the, the the guards, right? Me, Kiefer, and Matt. And I remember uh, during a moment during the game, and it was I would say they're up by whatever five, six points, or whatever, and it's the fourth quarter. I remember going up to them and saying, "Hey guys, we have to score every possession. <laughs> <laughs> like we gotta score. We have to score. Like we have to get a good shot every possession. That's it. They're too good. So." It was it was a heartbreaking moment, but um, I was hand happy for them because they deserved to win and they won the championship. And if you lose to the champions, I think it's okay. So yeah. I remember another team. I think most of them, the ones you mentioned, play, you played with them at the Sea Games, right? Yes, correct. So. Actually, they became they all became my friends. <laughs> We're all good friends now. Uh, we always talk about that game. Yeah. So I Russell Escoto was there too, who is now is my teammate in San Miguel. So. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy how basketball brings you closer. It's a small world. That in Kalaban mode, and kahanti mo na. Okay, now let's talk about the happier moments. What's your favorite UAP moment? Favorite UAP moment. Um, I I think uh, those two championships you won. Even if um I was not playing a lot, I was a rookie in my sophomore year. A uh, rookie year, which I hardly played, and then my sophomore year I was sparingly played. But just winning those two championships. Uh, I think people don't understand if you're if you're just part of a championship team, no matter what your role is, it's still like it's still crazy how how happy you get because you part you know the journey, yeah. You know that you know that it wasn't easy, it wasn't easy no matter who what role you played in the team and um, I'm sure you you you've been part of varsity teams, right? I'm sure like if you won a championship and you know that somebody somebody there who wasn't who was not playing a lot, you know that for him it's it's it feels like it's not 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 as good as how you would feel if you were playing a lot, but at the end of the day, you both are champions. So that's how I felt that we were, I, I was still a champion no matter what. So that was one of the happiest moments. Who's the PP player that's hardest to guard? Terrence and Stanley. Because, you know, it's, that's funny bro, because right? when I was a rookie in Global Port, I was I was a second stringer of the bench area. So in practices, I would have to guard one of them. <laughs> Right and um and my backcourt mate was Mike Cortez right and he was he's just an OG man he's yeah. you know he uh if he comes in whatever he does his work right so whoever was going harder that practice I had to guard him because <laughs> Mike would have you know you yeah. know what I mean like so I had to I man unstoppable those two guys are unstoppable Stanley because of his explosiveness the way he shifts from left to right and he has a crazy hop step like it's uh, and he and he can shoot. The thing is, the, what you think about don't know about Stanley is he used to be a shooter. He used to play my my role in in Division One, and now that he's doing all this stuff, it's hard. And for Terrence, no man, man, ever since high school, I was guarding him and he dropped fifty on me. In college, also, he was he was scoring thirty points, so it was just extremely hard to do in college. And then in the pros, you know, he scored like a what a scoring champion, how many times scoring champion, and now that he's in San Miguel, and I can see like grabbing decision making there, and it's so precise and um he's not just a scorer he he facilitates he plays a good he pressures full court um he makes winning plays now it's it's fun to be his teammate good pickup for san miguel for sure um 
I'm happy for both both of them. They're, actually, they're, they're both now in San Miguel teams. Yeah. So I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm also happy that that's happening. Speaking of that San Miguel team, you're part of a stack San Miguel team, and your role now. How how is the experience and like how's the vibe in practice? Now you win so many championships. It's like practice taken seriously still. Man, you know what? San Miguel is is such a crazy team to be in, man. Like. You have what so many Hall of Famers in that team, all-time greats, champions. It's crazy how when I came in, I was so nervous because I was the young guy who, like, who's this guy? You know, like, <laughs> and I was trying to fit. I was trying to trying to fit in. But practice is so fun because the guys are so cool, man. I'm telling you, like, they're so accepting of everyone. They don't care about anything. They just want to win. No individual glory. Even me, when I was a young, you know, if sometimes there's some teams, of course, you would think that if there's somebody coming in and, you know, he's trying to take your minutes and getting all this, temper this kind of like some animosity developing in the team. San Miguel had zero, no matter who it was, man. No, that's one thing that I love about the team culture. Yung samahan talaga ng San Miguel iba, and they welcome me with open arms and just trying to fit in again. I I, I don't think I've proven anything, man. Like I've played what three seasons with them. This is my fourth fourth season with with uh, PBA, I have I haven't done anything compared to any of them. <laughs> they, have, they they have won so many championships and won MVPs and all this. So I'm trying to fit in again and play my role, just try to do it at the best of my ability. And the field coach Leo has a lot to do with that. What does he do differently? It makes everyone involved. I think it's just uh, his personality, kind of like a father father figure to us. You know, very calm approach very warm approach and sometimes when you have uh, great players um, like the best five of San Miguel right those, as, as they call them you kind of just have to kind of let them go re- and then rain it down rain them down when it's kind of yeah. when kailangan na, but if you have that much talent to buy, you kind of just let them go and I think that, that's something that he does not get credit for na. he kind of allows a lot of freedom which is hard for a coach to do I think because siempre coaches want to control and be they want to be prideful. No, this is my team, you know. But he kind of let, lets us go. And then when the time comes that he needs to control us, he'll kind of bring us back. So uh, he's a good coach to be. Um, lucky to have him as a coach. And um, he's, he's he's one of the best of all time, I think. After all the, those years in Atenea, what was Atenea able to teach you? I, I have two answers for that. One answer uh, would be uh, off the court. Um, it's I think it's the value of education. You know, when I was in college, I didn't want to go to class, man. I don't want to. I don't want to. I just want to play basketball. I maybe talk to the girls in class. <laughs> that's, that's 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 what I wanted to do, you know. But, I, later on, you know, I, I eventually, you know, of course, I I did I did everything, you know. I passed my, passed all of my classes. I graduated. Yeah. But looking back, I'm not. I don't really remember like the details of like economics or math or. Uh, you know, accounting or some and something like that. I don't really remember those details, but I think I remember the work I put in to to gain that knowledge. Right now, I can easily apply that in my life. Like if I'm learning about I don't know a ba- a loan or I'm learning about a new business I want to be in, you know, I know the blueprint for it, and it's through researching, it's through writing down notes, and it's through memorizing, and and that's the that's the skill I got from from education. And I highly encourage everyone, especially the young kids who want to be basketball players, to keep education a, a number one priority after basketball or even before basketball. Keep it important because basketball is only what? You only play until, if you're lucky, until you're 35 to 40 years old, which is a, a great career already. And if you can make, uh, if you can be financially stable by that time, what are you going to do for the rest, the other half of your life? Right? Even if you don't have an education, that's the one thing I learned, you know, and I want to credit to my teachers and like a lot of my, I don't want to name all of them, there's too many, but the grade school, high school, college. I know, like I don't, you know, but um, yeah, education, that's that's my one one thing I want to, I, I could get back from the Atenea journey. And for basketball wise, um, I think it's just to be humble, be humble, Work hard. Um, those are so simple things that you hear every day. I mean, I'm pretty sure you heard it from your parents or your coaches or your teachers. But just be humble, man. Um, to all the guys, to all the kids, like just be humble, but work hard and try to improve um, every day and work on things specifically, if that makes sense a little bit. If you want to get better at one thing, you have to do it x number of hours. If you want to be better at shooting, 
you have to put X number of hours into it. And the number is up basically up to you. If you want to be better as a better defensive player, then you have to put uh, X number of hours into building up your body and doing push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and the bench press, all that stuff, like weights. It co- that's up to you. And I think that's one thing I've, I've learned. And just be, don't ever think that you've achieved anything because if you think about it, you really haven't achieved anything. Um, until when it's finally over, maybe you can say you've achieved something, but while you're in it and you're in the grind and you're in the process, always think that you have something to prove and then keep working. Um, that's it, man. It's... Okay, last night, let's take a picture. Can you do this? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Like this? Yeah. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Sniffing your papers! Why did it? Why do you do that? Can you follow me back on Instagram? Yeah, I don't run. Huh? I don't run. You don't?